This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on curvilinear motion, polar and cylindrical coordinates. It's from the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler, and this is chapter 12.8. Today's objectives, you will be able to determine velocity and acceleration components using polar and cylindrical coordinates. Activities include applications, we'll talk about the velocity and acceleration components, and then do some problem solving. So the cylindrical coordinate system can be used to describe the motion of the girl on this slide. Here the radial coordinate is constant and the transverse coordinate increases with time as the girl rotates about the vertical axis. And her altitude z decreases with time. How can you find her acceleration components? Okay, so first we'll talk about cylindrical components. Uh, here in 2D we have a vector r at some angle theta and that defines the position of that particle in this plane. So we have the unit vector u sub r and u sub theta and those point in these directions that you see here. So we can write down r as a vector is equal to the magnitude of r times the unit vector in the r direction. We call r the radial direction and theta the transverse direction. Now theta must be measured counterclockwise from the horizontal. So let's talk about velocity. Here again we have the position vector r going to a particle at some angle theta measured counterclockwise from the horizontal axis. And we can define a coordinate frame u sub r unit vector in the r direction and u sub theta unit vector in the theta direction. So we know that the velocity is the time rate of change of the position vector. I can also write that as dr u r dt. And when you take the derivative of this and do some manipulation, and that's all in the textbook, it comes out that the velocity is equal to r dot in the u sub r direction plus r theta dot in the u sub theta direction. And we can see that here in this bottom drawing. Um, the velocity vector v sub r is equal to r dot u sub r. So it's in the u sub r direction and it's just the time rate of change of r, right? If, as r gets longer, you're going to have a velocity component in the u sub r direction. And the component in the theta direction is r theta dot u sub theta. So what that means is that as the angle changes, theta dot, so that would like to be in radians per second, you can multiply it by r, and you'll get this component of the velocity vector. So an important thing to remember is that the velocity vector is r dot in the u sub r direction plus r theta dot in the u theta direction. So now let's talk about the acceleration. We know that the acceleration is the time rate of change of the velocity. So from the previous slide, I can write this as ddt of the velocity that we got from the previous slide. So r dot u sub r plus r theta dot u sub theta. Now when you take this derivative and do some, some manipulation, it turns out that the acceleration is r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the u sub r direction plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the u sub theta direction. So you can see that here, the radial component a sub r is this part, and the a sub theta in the transverse direction is a sub theta. We call this term the radial acceleration, or a sub r, and this term the transverse acceleration, or a sub theta. And the magnitude of the acceleration, of course, is the square root of the component, so r double dot minus r theta dot squared that squared plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot squared. So this is the magnitude of the acceleration. Now in cylindrical coordinates we can write this r sub p is equal to r in the u r direction plus z 
in the uz direction. So now I'm introducing a new direction here, u sub z. And taking time derivatives and using the chain rule, we can show that the velocity is equal to r dot in the u sub r direction plus r theta dot in the u sub theta direction plus z dot in the z direction. The acceleration can be written as r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the u sub r direction plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the u sub theta direction plus z double dot in the u sub z direction. So let's do an example. This platform is rotating such that at any instant its angular position is theta equals 4 times t raised to a 3 half power and that's in radians and t is in second. Also at the same time a ball is rolling outward in this slot uh, and its position is defined by 0.1 t cubed in meters. Find the magnitude of velocity and acceleration of the ball when t is equal to 1.5 seconds. So you may be confused a little bit about what these theta dots and theta double dots are. Well theta dot is in radians per second. So it's how fast theta is changing. And theta double dot is in radians per second squared. And that tells you how fast the velocity vector is changing. So let's use the polar coordinate system to solve this problem. So we were given r as a function of time, 0 0.1 t cubed. So you can take the derivative of that with respect to time, and it's 0 0.3 t squared, and take the derivative of that with respect to time, and you get 0 0.6 t. So it's the same thing for theta. Theta was given as 4 t raised to the 3 half power. So I can take the derivative of that with respect to time to get theta dot, and that's 6t to the 1 half. Take the derivative of that and get theta double dot. It's 3t to the minus 1 half power. So at the time we're interested in, 1.5 seconds, we can substitute 1.5 into these six equations I just wrote down and get that r is 0 0.3375 meters, r dot is 0 0.675 meters per second, and r double dot is 0 0.9 meters per second squared. And for theta, theta comes out to be 7.348 radians. Theta dot comes out to be 7.348 radians per second and theta double dot is 2.449 radians per second squared. So now it's just a matter of substitution. We have the equation for the velocity. It is equal to r dot in the ur direction plus r theta dot in the u theta direction. So r dot is 0 0.675, so this is 0 0.675 in the r, ur direction plus r times theta dot, 2.48 in the u theta. And that's in meters per second. So now let's do the acceleration. Let's write down our equation. The acceleration is r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the ur direction plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the u theta direction. So it's just a matter of substitution. Uh, a is equal to r double dot was 0 0.9. r is 0 0.3375. Theta dot was 7.348, and that's squared. And that's in the u r direction. Plus, in the u theta direction, r was 0 0.3375 times theta double dot, which was 2.449, plus 
plus 2 times r dot, which was 0 0.675 times theta dot, which was 7.348. And that's in the u theta direction. So when you do the arithmetic, it comes out that the acceleration is minus 17.33 in the ur direction plus 10.75 in the u theta direction. And that's in meters per second squared. The magnitude of the acceleration square root of sum of the squares comes out to be 20.4 meters per second squared. So here's another problem. The arm of this robot is extending. So it's extending out that direction at a constant rate of r dot is equal to 1.5 feet per second. When r is equal to 3 feet, z is 4 times t squared feet, and theta is 0 0.5 t radians, where t is in seconds. Find the velocity and acceleration of the grip, that means the end of the arm, when t is equal to 3 seconds. So at t is equal to 3 seconds, r is equal to 3 feet, and the arm is extending at a constant rate, r dot is 1.5 feet per second. So it's at its constant rate, r double dot is 0. So theta is 1.5 times t, so at 3 seconds it's equal to 4.5 radians per second. Theta dot is equal to 1.5 radians per second. It's just the derivative of that. And theta double dot is 0. And let's do likewise for z. z is equal to 4 times t squared. And at this instant, three, t is equal to 3 seconds, that is 36 feet. So z dot, take the derivative of this with respect to time, it's 8 times t, so in our case it's 24 feet per second. And z double dot is equal to 8 feet per second squared. So again, just substitute in the equations, the velocity equation in cylindrical coordinates is r dot in the u sub r direction plus r theta dot in the u theta direction plus z dot in the ur direction. So r dot is 1.5 plus r is 3, theta dot is 1.5, and that's in the theta, u theta direction, plus z dot, which is 24 in the uz direction. So the velocity comes out to be 1.5 in the ur direction plus 4.5 in the u theta direction plus 24 in the uz direction. And that is in feet per second. So there's the velocity vector. Uh, its magnitude, take the square root of some of the squares, is 24.5 feet per second. So now we'll do the acceleration in cylindrical coordinates. Let's write down our equation. Acceleration is r double dot minus r theta dot squared, that's in the ur direction, plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot, and that's in the u theta direction, plus z double dot in the u z direction. So in our case, that's equal to our double dot was 0, r is 3, theta dot is 1.5 squared in the ur direction, plus r is 3, theta double dot is 0, plus 2, r dot is 1.5, and theta dot is also 1.5. And that's in the u theta direction, uh, plus z double dot, which was 8. And that's in the u z direction. So you do the arithmetic, and it comes out that a is 6.75 in the r direction, plus 4.5 in the u theta direction, plus 8 in the u z direction. And that's feet. 
per second squared. And the magnitude of A, the square root of some of the squares, is 11.4 feet per second. This concludes 12.8, curved linear motion in polar and cylindrical coordinates. Next up, 12.9, absolute dependent motion analysis of two particles.